Field trip time. Field trip time. <laughs> all right. What do you, Raya Butler, East Indians, and Kingsleys all have in common? Well, they all stayed some time on a place called Nelson Island. Let's discover Nelson Island together. Time for another boat ride. We are here on the island. I think it's time to go into story mode. Hold on. Once upon a time, nestled off the northwestern coast of Trinidad, stood a group of islands. But scratch those islands. We, we, we want to look at this one, Nelson's Island. This particular island, Nelson Island, has been silently witnessing the turning tides of history over the centuries. It has kept many secrets, some of which we will reveal in this video. And as we will come to see, it has played a vital role in shaping the history of our nation, Trinidad and Tobago. So the first people on Nelson Island were the first people. You may know them as the Amerindians, the Caribs and the Arawaks. And because they didn't have these back then, Nelson Island was used as a trading post for them. Then, when this guy came across, Christopher Columbus, Nelson Island exchanged hands of different colonizers as they tried to set up a military base there. Fast forward to around this time, slavery was starting to see its way out. Slaves were resisting, working for free, Mm -mm. So plantation owners and the government of the day of several islands went looking for cheap labor. And where did they end up? India. In India, there's a caste system. And all of the people from India must belong to one caste or the other. The people that were sent to Trinidad and Tobago were from the lower caste. The very first boat that came to Trinidad and Tobago was the Fruto Razak. That did not come here to Nelson Island. It went directly to mainland Trinidad. When the first boatload of Indians came off at mainland Trinidad, the government then realized that this could be hazardous to the people of the island itself. So they had to find somewhere to make sure that when the other boats come in, they could come in and be quarantined, they checked, and everything they would need before they came to mainland Trinidad. Over 140,000 Indians came to Trinidad and Tobago. The ones who came to Nelson Island were registered here, and those who fell ill were sent to Marion Hospital over there. Here we have the remains of the Marion Hospital. If you look at the sign, you're going to see the process that they used for registering the East Indians when they came in. They were placed here, and then of course, Knowing which plantation they were assigned to, they would have been taken there directly after they were strong enough. So we're going in. 1845 to 1917 would have been the years that the East Indians were here. They had the largest footprint on the island. Here we're going to see some pottery, drums, their Bibles, the Bhagavad Gita, and stuff that they would have used. And here you're going to get a lot of history about Nelson Island and the East Indian people as they were here. You're going to see pictures of the registration books and so on, plantation pictures as they worked on the plantations. African slaves also left a footprint on the island, but not under the same conditions. Have you ever heard about the king's slaves? The African slaves, they weren't here for very long. There were just a few of them, and that's why they have a footprint here as well. There were skilled laborers from the slaves, and some of those skilled laborers were granted to the kings and the governors who were here before. 
fancy reason why they're called king slaves. And those are the ones that we use to construct this 1802 building. This building is 221 years old. The only roofed building that is still standing in Trinidad and Tobago is the oldest one, 221 years. So that building was used as a jail. Nelson Island has been the home to quite a few famous prisoners. Do you know who this guy is? Anybody knows too well? He was very instrumental in getting trade unions moving. He, he was Grenadian by birth, came to Trinidad to work in the oil fields, got injured and was given no compensation whatsoever. And that is what fueled that drive to fight for workers' rights. Started with him and I thank him for that. That's why today we are able to have trade unions with people that would fight for our rights as workers. While he was fighting for workers' rights, they saw him as a threat. He was incarcerated, brought to Nelson Island, and spent three years here. Then there was a state of emergency that took place in Trinidad again. So he was considered a threat, again incarcerated for another three years. This is where Tubal Uriah was held, this little cottage. He was allowed to step outside and do little activities like fishing, have a little sea bath, don't swim too far. But in total, he was confined to this island for six years. Oh, by the way, the National Trust is doing some pretty cool things with Nelson Island. They are completely run by solar power and they purify their own water from the sea using something called a desalination plant. This means as far as utilities are concerned, they are completely off-grid. So we are nearing the end and you know we can come all the way here and not do some fishing, right? There's a lot of history on Nelson Island. And this brings us to the end of the tour of Nelson Island. I really hope you learned a lot. It's a lot of information and I wish you all the best. What a journey. Who knew Nelson Island was connected to some of the major moments in our history? You should pay them a visit. Well, I really enjoyed this trip, even though it was very hot. Can't wait for the next one. But if you want to take a look at one of our other field trips, you can click here.